All right, everybody. Today I am sitting here with uh, um, my good friend Lindell K. Lindell John K. from the Spring Hope Enterprise. Whichever. <laughs> everybody know he used to be with the Rocky Mount Telegram, but About um, five years. Five years. That's right. But uh, we're just gonna do a little uh, sit down. Um, nothing formal. He had no idea what we were going to talk about when I got here. And he still don't. Um, but, um... And probably won't be <laughs> So we don't know how this thing going to turn out. But, um, what I, what I want to do is, um, uh, Linda and I go way back from when he got here. So I just want him to uh, kind of tell me a little bit about where he came from, uh, what brought him to Rocky Mount. We'll start with that right now. Uh, money. <laughs> I was um, in between newspaper jobs, and I had a I had a toss up between Rocky Mount and Wa Little Washington, mm -hmm. and I chose Rocky Mount. We Little visited, we, Carolina? yeah, yeah. We visited oh, okay. we visited both places, and um, Rocky Mount had Krispy Kreme, and that was one of my wash requirements. And, um, and we moved here in early 2015, and uh, spent. Right at five years at the Telegram, I semi-retired to the Enterprise because I, I knew that I only had a little bit of time left before I'd start teaching full-time. And so as I transitioned into that, um, I still I still have my relationship with the Enterprise, but uh, very soon I plan to be teaching uh, college full-time and only writing newspaper articles that I want to write about. Wow, I learned something new today. I yeah. knew you was um, doing the school thing, but I didn't know you were actually going to transition out of the newspaper thing. But um, Yeah, 20 years, I'm I'm kind of worn out. Wow, I can understand. I mean, people don't understand this. It's, it's, with just the little I do, um, it's time-consuming. It's, 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 <laughs> it's a cutthroat business. It too. is, oh but, yeah. You know, and you got to do your homework, you know, yeah. it, 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 it takes time. You got to reach out to people, you got to research and... Yeah, and it's a, it's a, you have to have a thick skin too. Yes, Because if, yes. you, if you get it right, you were supposed to. <laughs> and if you get it wrong, everybody and their mother will let you know about it, you know. Absolutely. And that's why, I mean, I kind of, um, and I've told you this before mm -hmm. in private, I mean, I admire what you do. Because what you do is you keep people on their toes. You know, you were, you were recording... City meetings long before anybody else was, long before they were being put on TV. You know, you um, you you're out there, and and I think that you were probably well ahead of the curve when it comes to citizen journalism. You know, you've been you've been doing this a long time. Well, actually, right before I I say right before you came, it was a guy, um, George Cheedy. I don't know whether you heard of him. I, I don't think so. He came from Boston, Massachusetts, I believe it was. But he was here, and, and he caught hell just like you did. I remember him going to meetings, and they wouldn't let him in. But they was in private locations, so right. you know they, they had the right to do that. But um, before he left, me, he and I, <laughs> we, we, we kind of bumped heads uh, like you and I did. But, yeah, we, but yeah. you know, that's what you do. But uh, it was interesting. Proverbs because, <laughs> said that. Friends sharpen each other like nine. Exactly, right? exactly, man. That's and that's what works. happens, you know. Absolutely. And, and, and what happened with George, y'all, uh, before he left, we met, and um, before he got ready to leave and go on, I think he went to Atlanta. And um, he worked for the, the for the Telegram, or he worked for the Telegram. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and I he left strange. Him. I never, yeah, yeah. But well, he was, he was, um, it was, it was a black guy, and um, um, yeah, we 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 used to bump heads all the time. But um, he the one that introduced me to blogging. Right before he left, we met, and um, he was like, "Man, what you doing? You know, you need to." Um, um, do blogging, so he kind of turned me on the blog. Yeah. So I started doing my research, and also it was a white female out of Greensboro that followed my um, social media pages, and she had talked to me too about uh, blogging because I had a TV show on uh, WNCR TV back in the day when Ray was there. You know, I, I like um, I like blogs. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, I I used to work at the the Daily News in Jacksonville okay. back in the day, many mm -hmm. years ago, and I had a blog that was. It was a crime blog, and it was 
actually some days it was more successful than, than right. the newspaper was. I mean, it would have more views on that one blog right. than the entire newspaper website. And there's some money in but, it, but I just haven't had time. Yeah, well, that, the company got all of I didn't get any of that. <laughs> well, money. I was talking about personal blogs. Right, you're right. They, they, but, some people do it for a living. <laughs> social media kind of hurt, kind of killed the blog a little right, bit, you yeah, know, because yeah. when Facebook come out and everybody can get on Facebook and say whatever right. they want to, mm -hmm. so it kind of... Um, the really good blogs are kind of gone. Right, right. There, exactly. was, there was some that, you know, even just 10 years ago, that right. were really mm -hmm. strong that Facebook is. And, and you're right, because I haven't I have heard from them, you know. Yeah, um, and, and, and I think it's a shame, because mm -hmm. um, uh, I think the blogs were really good, and, mm -hmm. I, and I think that they had, you know, people had something to say. Right. And now with social media, everybody has something oh, yeah. to say. But, but the, the thing with me with blogging, the reason why I still does it and, 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 and love it is because at one time, I could when I when I post a blog, and people don't understand. I can I could post it like I could do it the night, but set it to go off any time. Right. And so uh, what I would do is um, when I post it, it automatically went to my Facebook page, my LinkedIn page, my uh, right. Instagram, and all that. So Facebook stopped it. You can't do it. So now when I post something to my blog, it automatically goes to LinkedIn, um, yeah. Instagram, and all that stuff. But that's what I like about it because with a blog you can go back and find it, you can search it. But on Facebook you got to go back for days, and you may never find yeah, it. Yeah, I know. So it, that's that's the part. I, I mean, like I'm not a big. I, I run the I run the Facebook page for the newspaper, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I have my own about unidentified bodies. Right. But I don't. My personally, I my Facebook page I don't use because gotcha. I just don't like social media. Right. I, I think right. um, it's necessary. Don't get me wrong. Oh I mean, yeah, we okay, use oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I use it, but. Social media just makes jerks out of all of it. Oh, yeah. You know, there, there's, if, you, if you say something to somebody in person mm -hmm. that they don't like, mm -hmm. you risk the chance of them popping oh, you oh, in right. the face. Exactly, exactly. But if you mm -hmm. say it on social media, mm -hmm. you know, a thousand miles away, you can get really hurtful and really, right, right. really ugly really quickly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just, you know, it, it's, you know, everybody has an opinion. Right. But, you know, some mm -hmm. people are, are, oh, are yeah. bad. You know? oh, yeah. Some oh, people, yeah. I don't want to hear some people. <laughs> exactly. So, but with, 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 um, you know, with social media, things are just, our world has changed oh, in, yeah. in 10 years, more so than maybe it ever has before. Oh, oh yes. You oh, know? Yeah. And, and, it, and I mean, there's good and bad to it too. Oh, yeah. Though. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like with, um, with, with cell phones, you know, like, like, um, I'm sure we'll get into some meeting topics oh, yeah, yeah. here, but you know, just you know, I'd like to bring up George Floyd. Right, right. Um, things didn't get better in the last two years because people got better. That's right. It mm -hmm. got better because all of a sudden everybody has a cell phone. <laughs> exactly. And exactly. when you do something stupid, mm -hmm. okay, like like um, <laughs> you know, in the past, if someone got beat up by the cops mm -hmm. and they went and they said, "I got beat up by the cops," right. well, they got to. They're dealing with the system. Mm -hmm. That judge, mm -hmm. that lawyer, mm -hmm. that police chief, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear that their people beat somebody yeah, up. Right. But with cell phones, oh, yes. it, there's no doubt, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of it's a it's a catch twenty two for me. That's right. Because social media is annoying to me, mm -hmm. but at the same time it does oh, yeah. serve a purpose, you know. And we're seeing oh, yeah. I mean, I was watching um, footage the other day from Ukraine mm -hmm. and watching these refugees trying to get through mm -hmm. a, a, a broken bridge. That's and right. The foot, I mean, it looked like a movie to me because mm -hmm. the footage is, is so hard to believe that it's right there happening as we're watching mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, the you put a cell phone in everybody's hand mm -hmm. and suddenly people are more accountable. That's right. And we have less Bigfoot sightings, mm -hmm. right? Because if you... You know, you notice that, that Bigfoot yeah, well, yeah. sign. As soon as cameras, as soon as cameras came out, we saw less and less Bigfoot. Right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, it does. Um, things are. I mean, I've seen, and I was inside the news business when all this happened. Right. You know, right. I was inside when when cell phones come along. Mm -hmm. I was inside when when uh, blogs came along, and mm -hmm. then social media, and all these things. And it's um, it's kind of strange. You know, I mean, yeah. it's 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 weird to see. How much we've changed mm -hmm. compared to when I started, and and then if you think about someone that's a little bit older than me, right? What they, what more they've seen, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just like my kids. I mean, I mean, my kids don't know mm -hmm. an age without right. cell phones. They they don't. Not all. I mean, my, maybe my oldest two do okay. a little bit, but mm -hmm. I mean, my younger ones. They're my youngest one's sixteen now. Oh, okay. And um, if he 
wants to know something, mm -hmm. he can look at right, it just yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, there's no excuse not to know something. That's today. right. You know, I mean, there's so much out there that, that so many resources that we have that... that if that you don't know, it's basically your fault. Yeah, that's absolutely. Not, you know, absolutely. All you got to do is research it. You know? my, my mother... Um, now, my mother grew up in the Depression, mm -hmm. right? And she was a uh, 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 old school person, mm -hmm. right? But the one thing that she had when we were kids is every year we had a new set of encyclopedias. Right, right. right. That's, that's now, people, right. you know, what is an encyclopedia <laughs> today but a Google search, right? Right, right. But when we were kids, I mean, mm -hmm. that encyclopedia, a mm -hmm. new one every year. That's and right. if we wanted to know something, mm -hmm. we looked it up. That's right. And if we, if, when I come to her and ask her a question and mm -hmm. say, Mama, what is it? She'd go look it up. That's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, kids are spoiled today mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. that and uh, that they have the world at their fingertips mm -hmm. and then they don't really use but, it. But, you know, even with that, though, I, I find that um, older people are lazy. No, yeah. I mean, you know. They, well, they, they like to they, tell they, a story they, more they, than right, the truth. Right, I mean, right. they, they, I see that all the time <laughs> in my report, you know. I'll mm -hmm. ask, you know. Uh, you know, like for instance, the biggest news in the little town of Spring Hope that mm -hmm. I live in is Bojangles just opened, right? I mean, okay, it's huge yeah. news. But for years, <laughs> all the rumors and, and folklore and stories about why Bojangles hadn't opened yet, mm -hmm. I mean, people would rather just tell the story than they would <laughs> find out the truth. Right. And I see that a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that goes a lot into, um, I think Rocky Mountains are like that a lot. Oh, oh yeah, oh, definitely. People would rather just go with the story that is comfortable to them mm -hmm. or that confirms what they believe that's right rather than they would look at the truth oh yeah well well i was even talking about just like um stuff going on locally i mean i i, I seen time well, let, me, let me go back when i first started out i was using a typewriter oh my then goodness. i went to a word processor then i went to going to somebody's house using a computer wow. i mean one because i i couldn't have one but i didn't know what to get and, and and I won't really that far into it. So I was around people that had one and, and I just used theirs and then and yeah. had Black Workers for Justice had a, right now where the event center is, they used to have a building that's so I used to go down there and get on the computer and stuff. But the reason why I got into this is because back in the day in the black community, we there was the the elderly was saying we needed our own newspaper, our own media. And even ministers and stuff, and and nobody was doing anything. So I took it upon myself to 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 start. I, I was I was typing out, handing out the newsletter, trying yeah. to get the news. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how it started out. I mean, that's that's it, you know, that's <laughs> real news. To me. Yeah. I mean, that's real journalism. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what um that might be what survives when right. newspapers are gone. You know? Exactly. You know, so um that that's how I got into this. You know, trying to make sure people get get the news, but then. In 1996, when I um, now I, I came out of school in '81, so we'll talk about Woo. the late '80s. '81. <laughs> oh, I came out in '81. Yeah, you're a little bit older than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna get to that, <laughs> and uh, but then we already there. But um, um, but yeah, but um, and then in 1996, my best friend that just passed last year, um, um, in um October, he took me onto a video camera. He gave me a video camera for a gift, and so I start videoing everything I do. So I start going to me's and video. I'm in video. I feel like we should see. like like I feel like we should both be on the camera. <laughs> no, no, no. I no, think no. we should. I think we should. It feels like we're almost like we should both be. Here. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 because it's, 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 no. I, I want people to know who you are, and, and that's another thing. People love it. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm that's lying. another thing. Um, out of all these years, I have video. I take pictures. You see me. And everybody be like, you need to be on that side of the camera. No, no, no. I don't want to be on that side of the camera. Well, I take a picture. I, I, I video. I'm going to get a little further ahead than I want to. But when uh, President Obama came to Durham, to North Carolina Central, to announce he was running, I went there. I videoed him there. He came to Wilson, Benfield. I videoed him there. He came to Greenwood, at ECU. I videoed him there. Um, his wife came to Rock Mountain Senior High, I videoed her, uh, um, um, President Clinton came to Wesleyan College, I videoed him. I took no pictures with nobody. I was on stage with the media. I took no pictures. I, I don't take pictures of, and I look at these guys today, every time I turn around in these photo ops with the mayor and all right. that kind of stuff, I'm like, please, go slow I mean, and I, sit out. I, I certainly <laughs> understand that to a degree, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's also, there's, there's, um, there's a brand to be built. Though. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, you yeah. know, um. I didn't get no picture, but I made sure I, I shook the president's hand. Right. Oh, yeah. I he came to um, 
uh, uh, Kent Lejeune okay. when I was covering that area mm -hmm. for the for the newspaper there, and he came. Uh, he flew in on Marine One, mm -hmm. and I mean it was it was it was really cool. Too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I and I got to shake. Um, that was Obama I'm talking right. about. Mm -hmm. And I got to shake uh, Clinton's hand when he came here to Rocky Mountain. Okay. When he was you know mm -hmm. stumping mm -hmm. for his wife. Mm -hmm. And um, who else? It seems like there's and some governors and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. definitely. But, I mean, oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. it's um, but I understand what you're saying though. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, I've never been that impressed by people. Right. So right. I mean, it's cool to get. I got my picture with with Cooper a couple times. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool to have that picture. But at the same time, I mean, my daddy used to have a saying when I was growing up, we mm -hmm. would talk about celebrities, and my daddy would always say, I wouldn't walk to the end of the street to see him. <laughs> and I, I mean, I just, I guess I've right. met people, I just feel that way about people. I mean, I'm more interested in what yes, they're yeah. doing. Right, that's yeah. right. See, that, that's what, my then, point. Than what they, yeah, that's so right. I, I, I understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, my, my thing was, I wanted to get the message out. Yeah, that's my sole purpose, not to be there to be in the Photoshop. And that's know? why, you know, like a lot of times I, I'll go to meetings and people won't even know I'm there. Right, I sit right. in the corner and mm -hmm. I mean, I'm there to observe and report. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm there to find out what they that's what right. they're saying and mm -hmm. tell what they're saying. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a socialite, you know, I'm not, <laughs> right, right, right. I'm not a, 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 a go out and, and eat oysters kind of guy <laughs> oh, yeah. with the good old boys. You know, I don't meet at Hardee's or... Right, or, right. I know there's some rich white guys meet somewhere. I don't know. It's, it's Hardee's or... <laughs> it's, um, it used to be Hardee's. Bojack is somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean, oh, it's... Yeah. They're meeting somewhere. Oh, in, yeah. in, in, in Jacksonville, when I used to work there, they called it the Cracker, Backer, the Cracker Barrel Quorum. Because oh. they, they, would, they would all meet there and right. hash out the meeting before the real meeting. That's right. That's but, right. yeah, I mean, I don't... Um, I'm not worried about well, that. Well, stuff, even, well, see, I, uh, and with local politics, um, it's funny because when I joined the Democratic Party and I used to write a lot of letters to the newspaper, to the Rock My Telegram, people thought I actually worked with the uh, newspaper because yeah, I, I had two or three articles you were still, every, every, yeah, every, every, you, every, every still, week. You were still writing some good letters <laughs> when, I was, when I first got there. Right, yeah, and, and so um, when I went to political meetings, I didn't even stand around and talk to the elected officials because I didn't want nobody to know I knew them. Right. And, and see, that way, if I um, if they saw I had association with them, then they would say things around me. Well, you still uh, <laughs> you still well known because my wife's got a friend that um, I don't know how your name come up. Something to do with me, something mm -hmm. other, and she just she was like, "What you know." Mm -hmm. You know, Dancy, I can't put, you know, so, right, I mean, yeah. you're not. Wait, well, her up. son, her son uh, went to school with my son and stuff, so she, she, she knew of me, and she used to ride with me to the game sometimes, because her son played football and stuff, especially when we went, like, little Washington or somewhere, like, right. talking about, yeah, but, um. You well know, you, you're oh, like, oh, yeah. you know, I, I, um, <laughs> there's, there's a movie, I, 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 I can't think of the name of it, but there's a scene where the mayor of Philadelphia mm -hmm. opens the, paper mm -hmm. and he sees a story in there and he's just like really angry and mm -hmm. I, I saw that when I was you know right uh, probably a child mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that there was something in that that spoke to me about not necessarily who I am but right. what I write right, and gets right. you know really ruins somebody's day mm -hmm. so I, I guess I mean I'm in mean, <laughs> folks I really like to ruin people's day I mean I like um you know there uh Dan Kane I'm sure he he's a Investigative reporter for uh, the News and Observer. Right, right, right. And right. Um, I called. I talked to. It, it's. I don't. We don't need all the details. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there was a guy that told me one time that he hates to see Dan Kane on his caller ID because mm -hmm. he knows he's in trouble. <laughs> and you know, I had. I. I always remembered that. And then mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I had a local politician tell me that. Mm -hmm. like, you know, every time right. that you're calling me, I know it's something, <laughs> something's happened. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know, there's a little bit of, um, uh, that can be addictive, I'll be honest with you. I mean, that can be right. that that rush of, of, of influence, of knowing that that I have done something that, that matters. Well, well, the thing about know? that is, like I tell people all the time, if you are not doing anything, then you don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, you, well, you oh, can't yeah, give me anything. You can't give me anything to write about if you're not doing anything. Right. So make sure whatever you do is legit and, and above board, and then I can't write about you. Yeah, that's you know? right. So, and it goes hand in hand with being, um, being like a public figure too, because mm -hmm, right. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, when you when you step into that world, you put yourself out. There. That's right. You, yeah, you open yourself up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. So yeah. I mean, you know, I don't. I, the only time that I write about private citizen is. is when crime is involved, right, that's right, and when crime is involved, they're not. It's it's 
it's become public, That's you right. know, because they're accused of committing a crime. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I mean, I've, I've been accused of a lot of things. Well, of well, years, my thing you know? is, like I tell people all the time, that you, <laughs> that was your profession. Yeah. You're doing what you do. Absolutely. Again, like I just said, if you're not, if you got your house in order, then you don't have to worry about it. I said, I don't have to worry about you. <laughs> you see right. what I'm saying? Oh, believe me, when, when, um... and anybody, because I'm going to make sure, I tell people when I leave home in the morning, I make sure a, a red flag goes up. Ain't nobody going to hear about me messing with women. That's right. Or uh, 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 driving drunk or uh, doing crime because that's what they want to see. People would love to wake up tomorrow morning and see Camilla's dance. Oh, I put on front page. page. I put you, it on you put that yeah, yeah, on Oh, man, page. you will sell some paper. See, because yeah. I told you that Negro was crazy. That's right. You and and, and, and mm -hmm. the thing about it is is that I'm the most boring person <laughs> in the whole world, right? Outside of my job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm Like you said, I don't, I don't drink. I haven't. I, I Probably since my Navy days have mm -hmm. I. Gotten well, I quit drinking thirty uh, five years. Yeah, me too. Long like, time ago. I, I, I never, I never smoked any no, cigarette. You know, I mean, I, I smoke a cigar once in a blue moon, right. but mm -hmm. but I don't. Women, not, I mean, you know, look right. at me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm lucky I got the woman I got. <laughs> me I too. Me ain't too. Try to find another. Me too. <laughs> I don't. I, like you said, I mean, I don't. I don't break any laws. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I do get a speeding ticket. Right. 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 Yeah, but man. but I mean, I'm just a boring person. Right. So too. there's no. Um, there's no dirt to be when, found when I go to sleep that doesn't exist. Right. right, when I go to sleep at night, I can, I can sleep and wake up in the That's morning right. and I can, you know, just go on my way. <laughs> my, my old, one, of my old, one of my older brothers who I learned a lot from, mm -hmm. uh, he used to always, you know, tell me that, that you got to, whatever you do, you got to be able to sleep with it, you know. And, and I mean, I, I always have. And those, those times, there are times when certain stories that I've written, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. wow, you know, I mean, that, you know, it's a shame. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it is, what it is. I didn't, you know, if, if I wasn't going to do it, somebody, somebody else was going to do it. And they wouldn't do it as good as me. Exactly. And, you and, 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 and you're right. So, and, and you're I right, mean, you know, because if somebody else tell it, that we're going to try to get the details, all yeah. of the details. But they are going to tell half of it, you know. That's true. You can only tell what you know. You can only tell what you know. That's the important part of it, too. That's the important part. So, I mean, that's all, um, that's all. And, you know, and it's, you know, and I, and I get stuff wrong, too. Well, but I'm the, I'm the I'm the first to admit it mm -hmm. and the first to correct it. I remember right. many years. This go back many years, probably 15 years mm -hmm. ago. We had a, a guy that killed a girl, and um, they charged him with a with a murder crime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I, I've lost what the detail is, but the point is, is that I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And this was such a high profile story. Mm -hmm. He was a marine, a decorated marine, okay. and all that. I wanted to put the correction on the front page mm -hmm. because I felt like we made the mistake on the right. front page. We didn't fix it on the front that, page. That's right. And they didn't want to do that, mm -hmm. but I ultimately I won. I don't win okay. all the battles, right, but right, that right. was you know that was pretty important mm -hmm. to me. And, and, and I think it's it's cowardly. A lot of times you'll see a newspaper will make a big mistake, mm -hmm. but the correction will be on page oh, three. Right, right. You know that that small. You know we. Mm -hmm. You know so. I can, my mistakes have all been honest mistakes. Right. Now, right. Now, typos and stuff, I, oh, yeah. you know, that oh, yeah. happens. Oh, yeah. I can't, oh, yeah. you know, I, oh, yeah. I, you oh, know. Yeah. I've got good editors. I can say <laughs> right. that for, well, yeah, see, that's right. they, they fix a lot of my mistakes. Right. But I have from time to time, I know a really good mistake I mm -hmm. made one time was a guy was charged with murder and, um, they had charged him with possession of a firearm okay. by a felon. Right? Mm -hmm. So I put in there that he had the murder weapon. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was young and I was right. inexperienced, and it was a conclusion that I should not have made. Right. But I, I jumped to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. And come to find out, they never even had the murder weapon. They charged him with... Yes. Mm -hmm. With possession of a firearm based on a uh, witness statement, okay, which seems kind of shady. I mean, mm -hmm. how do you charge somebody with possession <laughs> if they don't actually possess it? Yeah. But I mean, you know, that was that was part of but the learning process, growing, right? Yeah, yeah. and I learned, I learned a lot. You make of, mistakes. That's how you get better. This business, to me, right. is about mm -hmm. is about learning. And that's and that's why it's a shame. I think that that we're seeing a lot of older journalists leaving the business. Right. You know, the pay's not right. Folks, oh, yeah. it's, a, it's the worst job in America year <laughs> after year because of the pay, the, the suicide rate, mm -hmm. the long hours. I mean, it's just a terrible job. I mean, okay. you, have to, you have to love telling the, the truth right, to right, do right. this job. Because mm -hmm. it ain't, it certainly ain't the money. There ain't no <laughs> money involved right. in this job. So it's a shame that so many people who have learned mm -hmm. are leaving compared to People that are coming right in that don't know anything, and that's they right. can get, you know, uh, 
they can get abused by people who, who politicians who've had years and years of experience on how to tell a story right. can take advantage of young journalists. That's right. That's right. And I mean, that's part of, you know, what I'm teaching. I'm, I haven't taught the class yet at Wesley, but I'm certified to, to teach journalism there. Okay. And I'm teaching a lot of other classes out at the other, at, I teach at Roanoke Chowan too. Okay. And I'm trying to instill mm -hmm. some of this research and some of this journalism into these young kids because, I mean, research is the boring part. It's not boring to me. I right, love right, research. Right. I, I love too, research. But I mean, it's the, to a lot of people, it's the boring part of the right. job, but that's the part that... Well, they want it right then. Right. right. Like the microwave thing. I, yeah. I don't want to look for it. I want somebody, I that's want to right. know it, you know. That's right. And and, 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 and I and see, like, when I um when I share stuff, I want, I got to have a source. And then, like, if I see something out, somebody send me something, I'm going to find a reputable source. Right. I'm not going to just share it from any uh, 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 newspaper. It's got to be a legit newspaper. You see what I'm saying? Well, saying? see, yeah, and, and not only that, I mean, we get we get in this mode where people want to play gotcha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that, that spoils journalism. That's and, right. Uh, you know, I think a good example of that is um, back when I was writing about City Hall a few years mm -hmm, ago, mm -hmm. uh, somebody had posted a picture of the city manager at the time. Mm -hmm. She had parked in a veteran's store. Right, I remember that. And they were raising all kinds of things about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and like it was some kind of great crime. <laughs> and they were really, there was, we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that. There was a right. lot of people trying to pressure me to write about this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, well, one, there's no story there because I know for a fact that her husband's a veteran. Right. And those spaces are reserved <laughs> for veterans and their families. And their benefits, right. Right. So, so, but the thing is, is that you do a little bit more research on it. Mm -hmm. And when she was in Fayetteville, mm -hmm. she was the assistant city manager in Fayetteville, mm -hmm. she actually worked with Harris Teeter. She was the whole reason that mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. veteran spaces even started. <laughs> wow. But, but it was all, there was a, uh, there was an era of gotcha -ism mm -hmm. there in Rocky Mount that I probably contributed to. <laughs> Um, but you didn't know the culture. But yeah. right, I'm saying I mean, that was the, until you learn, and, and you gotta go through the process and, and and learn along the way because you don't know the people, and you don't know right. the culture. So until you get to that point where okay, now I see. I mean, this is like anything. When I get in any organization, until I get in there and learn, I might go along with something and it won't right. But once I learn that, it, I can take for instance when I joined the NAACP in Rocky Mount. They were uh, uh, not having elections. I didn't start having elections. They were just. Well, who was how are they coming up with who was in charge? If they didn't have the, the same. The same people stayed <laughs> in. And, and and what they did, they because I was see a lot of things. I I got into, I got positions because I was the youngest. It was by default. It won't cause they wanted me, right? But it, it calls for uh, maybe calls for uh, age. It's like in something. church when they ain't Sunday school teacher. Right? <laughs> right. Whoever don't move, whoever, whoever right. doesn't step back fast enough ends up teaching Sunday okay. school. So, so that's what happened with me. A lot of places I, I got these positions because, but I told them I want the record to show that I'm accepted, but I want the record to show that it was not done right. So that and, and that's what tickles me about people because people put me in that certain category, but. When it comes to organizations or anything, I'm strictly by the book. Strictly by the book. I don't care what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't belong in the organization. You know, gotcha, Mark. I wouldn't belong to anything. Well, anything with happen, policy and so, procedures, like on my yeah. job. You know, policy and procedures, sure. no matter what it is, you know, I'm a, I'm a strictly by the book. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, speaking about when, when I was covering Rocky Mountain, mm -hmm. um, that was just a mess. Okay. Because what I was trying to do was do what I had done anywhere else I had been. But it was and a different any, moment. <laughs> right. Well, anywhere else I had ever been, I, I felt like when you cover when you cover City Hall, your mm -hmm. job is to is to cover City Hall. Right. right? Mm -hmm. If they do something good, great. Mm -hmm. If there's something going on, it's the it's the it's the reporter's job to That's find right. that out. Because mm -hmm. as as the as the fourth estate, the, the media, we're the only ones sometimes that's going to tell the truth. Right. right? Mm -hmm. The government ain't going to tell the truth. Right, right. You know, so, mm -hmm. but what had happened is in that environment, mm -hmm. I couldn't just do my job. Right. Because I had, right. I had, there was a, a group of rich, old, racist right. white folks exactly. that were just dead set on, mm -hmm. on tearing apart. Mm -hmm. The city exactly. burning it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a contingent of disgruntled black folks mm -hmm. that saw everything mm -hmm. that I did as an attack. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it really was a no-win situation. Right. Right. And so when I was covering City Hall like that, 
I, I but you had more to lose from the disgruntled white men than you did no, the black people. I, mean, I don't. I don't. They don't bother me. I mean, no, I don't, no. I don't, what I'm saying is they got influence to. Sure, they, sure. They, they, they would have called down and see what people don't understand. Well, they they tried. make a phone call they, they and try tried. to get rid of you. Oh, see? they tried. Right. That's what I'm saying. Believe me. There was. There was. When I wrote about David Combs oh, man. with I his um, crooked real estate mm -hmm. deal, signing people's names mm -hmm. to papers and all, mm -hmm. they they tried them right. to put an end to. But I mean, it's it's <laughs> the thing is, is that um, I don't care about any of that. You're right. And and but I learned that in Rocky Mountain, everybody else does. <laughs> right. So um, my mistake, and mm -hmm. I made a mistake in mm -hmm. covering City Hall. Mm -hmm. My mistake was that. I should have latched on to the mm -hmm. real problems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I told you earlier about the um, um, Rochelle parking in right. the wrong space, right. I never wrote that story. Right, right. Because it was not a story. Uh -huh. But I should have extrapolated that out to some other right, things right. I wrote. Right, right. And, and I should have focused more on uh, the, the big story that I, that I won a, a Press Association mm -hmm. Award for, I'm proud of it, was was writing about Landis Falcone, right. mm -hmm. who lived in Virginia, but right. somehow worked uh -huh. here. You know? uh -huh. I should have I should have drilled down on that and mm -hmm. really concentrated on mm -hmm. that. But what happened is, as I got into the swing of things, mm -hmm. and as we started to write about City Hall, mm -hmm. and keep in mind that for a few years prior to me, and mm -hmm. even a few years back, there wasn't a lot of uh, critical scrutiny mm -hmm. of City Hall. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. There wasn't mm -hmm. a lot of there was mm -hmm. a, there was some reporting, but it right, was right, basically right. it was surface this is what happened and this, you know. So people were kind of thirsty for on both sides. Right. Not they, any oh, side. Oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah, oh, people yeah. were just thirsty for something mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. And so when I got a taste of that mm -hmm. and the newspaper got a taste of that mm -hmm. where there were some stories that we probably shouldn't have written mm -hmm. or or should have just uh, held on to and, and, and analyzed mm -hmm. further. Mm -hmm. There was a period there for about three months mm -hmm. where I was in, I think this was January, February, March of 2019, okay. where I was writing about everything <laughs> that I could find. Right. And what happened was, and I stand by the reporting, I think <laughs> the reporting was solid, <laughs> but some of it was ill-timed and some of it was ill-placed. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, not all of it was since I was doing it every day right, on right, a right. rapid fire approach, mm -hmm. not all of it was was you know. There's a bigger picture mm -hmm, to think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that's I think that's where I made the big mistake mm -hmm. was that I wasn't looking at the bigger picture. I wasn't looking at Rocky Mountain as a whole. Mm -hmm. I was looking at what I perceived my one job. My one job to me mm -hmm. was to write about City Hall, mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now. Um, I would go to meetings mm -hmm. after a couple stories would come out I'd go to a meeting mm -hmm. and there'd be a little old white lady mm -hmm. there and she would say oh I love your work mm -hmm. but I know she wasn't she, didn't, she, wasn't, interested in she wasn't interested in me or my work mm -hmm. she loved the fact that mm -hmm. I wrote a story about Andre mm -hmm. you know and it, and it took me a little mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. to catch on to that mm -hmm. and and once I I just I lost um I lost interest in it once I realized that it did not matter mm -hmm. what I wrote. All that <laughs> some people happen. wanted to see was mm -hmm. Andre and Ruben, mm -hmm. and that was it. Mm -hmm. And I got tired of that mm -hmm. because there was a whole lot more. At the same time all this was going on, mm -hmm. I was writing about the mayor who mm -hmm. had crooked real estate. Mm -hmm. I was writing about how but Steve Wurzberg, were, well, I was writing about how they wanted to Closed down Gold Rock, uh, so they I, I could, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, so they could open up their own truck stop. Mm -hmm. right. They wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was writing about these other things mm -hmm. that were just as important, mm -hmm. and maybe even more important. Mm -hmm. But all anybody wanted to hear about was Andre, mm -hmm. and it just after a while it just got to where I was just sick to my stomach because mm -hmm. I was tired of the Andre watch, mm -hmm. you know. And and I helped create that. I should, right. you know, I mean, I did because mm -hmm. he is newsworthy. Well, I mean, well you was giving I mean, the people what they want, and see. Even with myself, trying to, I, I just got off work now, three thirty to come here, and even with myself, I've been trying to write a story of uh, um, 
just like you said, people give you stuff. People give me stuff before I can finish one thing. Is it like people dying before you can burn one? Absolutely. You, just, you got something else. So I know exactly where you're going. You live with a show in your hand. Right. And yeah. see, I, I be writing a, I've been trying to write a story, and I'm going to go and say it now so people know when I put this out there. I've been trying to write a story about uh, uh, Representative James Gaggett for two weeks. But other stuff come up, and it's more... To me, people need to know about it, so I haven't finished. Yeah, it. I mean, you that's, know, and, that and that's what you get into, you know, cause, you know, and, and and so, um, like I said before, I can even get through a one story. I, could, I, I when I'm writing a story, I'm on the phone, I'm on the internet, so I got all this stuff going through my head. I can't even finish one thing, so I can imagine what you're doing, yeah, and, yeah, and, see, I, and you're getting paid to do that, so you're trying to to do your job. This is something I do on the side, right. but I'm trying to feed the people, give the people what I think they let need. Me, let me say this. <laughs> let me say this. Mm -hmm. And I look in the camera. Folks, when I'm free of the newspaper, mm -hmm. and I don't have that obligation to the newspaper mm -hmm. to cover Christmas parades and beauty pageants <laughs> and all the things that I have to cover as mm -hmm. my, part of my job, job. Mm -hmm. when I'm free to do what you do, right. Look out, right? Because I got stuff. And right. I got stuff right. that people are not, you know. I have put people in prison before, right? right? Mm -hmm. So I got stuff, and when I got the time to do it, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just just to back up just a second mm -hmm. about the frustration of mm -hmm. trying to do even reporting right. in this town, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I I left I left the Telegram in in August of 2019, okay. or no, July, July of 2019 to go to the Wilson Times and mm -hmm. the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Not a knock on the Telegram at all. I, I loved working there. Mm -hmm. They got a, a new publisher. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a great guy. I mean, the Telegram was good. It was mm -hmm. good to me. Mm -hmm. I love the area. I love the newspaper. Um, but I just wanted something that I could be less involved right, in. Right, right. Because, I mean, I was wrapping up my master's degree. I had a lot of, a lot of mm -hmm. stuff on my plate. Mm -hmm. Plus, the enterprise office is two doors down from my house, mm -hmm. and my wife works at the library, which is mm -hmm. right across the street. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, it would. Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with the people at the Telegram that were willing to pay me mm -hmm. a lot more money to stay, mm -hmm. but I didn't take it because it ain't, <laughs> it ain't the money. It was being able to get mm -hmm. up and walk across the street <laughs> to go to work. Right. I mean, that's you know, <laughs> especially <laughs> since I'm rolling backwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm transitioning. Yeah, yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah. I'm transitioning out of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, but from time to time when I see a story, mm -hmm. and people always say, why do you write about Rocky Mountain? You're going to spring hope. Rocky Mountain is the biggest city in this county, so of course it's a And what goes on with Rocky Mountain affects all yeah, the little towns. Right. They it don't sure understand does. that. So, so I wrote um, two stories mm -hmm. and about, I don't know, it's been three weeks ago probably. Mm -hmm. I wrote about uh, Councilman Knight, mm -hmm. and when I call him Andre, I'm not being right, disrespectful. Right, 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 I know right. a lot of people but, probably. But you talk are, to him. But I mean, I know him. Other, right. I mean, I, 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 I can. <laughs> I mean, I consider him a friend. I've right. known him. He's the very first politician I ever met when I got to town, mm -hmm. and I've said this before, but I think it bears repeating. Mm -hmm. He helped me with those uh, murder, murder, those murder, murder cases with the women that had been murdered. People had forgotten about those mm -hmm. cases. I've gotten some of those cases reopened through mm -hmm. attention. That all came from. Night because if he didn't help me, I wouldn't have known right. where to well, turn see, to. We, we, we did a thing so, on murder missing women. That's yeah. what we were doing with NOSCP. Exactly. So he was when you when you came, that was right on time. Yeah. Right? So so um, I wrote a story about Councilman Knight getting injured, mm -hmm. and I still don't know all the details. Right. right. You know, and I, I think I got some of it wrong. But when <laughs> right. you don't, when, when you, you don't, don't know, know, you, you don't know what, what you it know. is. Right. right. You report okay. It. And you receive them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I also reported about Tarek Pittman, who mm -hmm. was. Andre's, uh, I'm sorry, Councilman Knight's opponent in the last election. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tarek got evicted, mm -hmm. and he threatened the guy that was doing mm -hmm. the, the process, mm -hmm. and he's got a court date for that in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wrote, about, I wrote about both of them mm -hmm. because I don't care. Right. About you know I mean I don't I don't I don't play politics. People it's, think it's, I do, but I just I. But it's the issue, not it, the person. Man, if my grandma <laughs> did something that was I thought would be interesting, I would write about it, right? right. So I write about these two things: one about Councilman <laughs> Knight falling off the roof, one about Mr. Pittman mm -hmm. getting in trouble for for mm -hmm. threatening people. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's there's Facebook pages, and it goes back to what I said earlier about how much I hate social media, right? There's, we, I know that's ironic because I run two Facebook pages, and we're talking for. But that's Facebook. where the news. But is. it right. So, so this 
this website, this Facebook page, I mean, Concerned Citizens, no, right right about the citizens. Mm -hmm. they ran wild with the Andre story. Mm -hmm. I mean, wild mm -hmm. with, with speculation about what happened, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that was in there. Mm -hmm. But not a word about Mr. Pitt. <laughs> Especially his association to the mayor, that the mm -hmm. mayor appoints him mm -hmm. to the, uh, to the uh, housing uh, authority, a, a, a group that controls <laughs> rent and for a lot of people in Rocky Mountain. Mm -hmm. Not a word, mm -hmm. like crickets. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even. I mean, nothing. Mm -hmm. So then I I go on a local show and I point that out, mm -hmm. and the response isn't like, oh, we need to fix what we're doing right. wrong. Mm -hmm. The response was to attack me, attack which you. I just laugh at. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But the the thing is, is that's what's mm -hmm. going on in this town is that that people see uh, Andre Knight is kind of like the boogeyman, mm -hmm. right? And then, but they don't want to say anything about the mayor who made an incredibly stupid mm -hmm. choice mm -hmm. to appoint Tarek to the that housing authority board, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, to me, that just lays it all out there. Mm -hmm. It lays it out, what it's all about for, mm -hmm. for, for, for those folks. Mm -hmm. They can deny it. Mm -hmm. You know, they can try to shuffle it around and say, mm -hmm. you know, they can say whatever. Mm -hmm. But in Rocky Mount, there is this huge, huge race problem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That, you know, like, like you know, the, the Confederate Monument is a good right. example. Mm -hmm. How in the hell <laughs> was that thing? Can I say hell? Yeah, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How yes, in the yes, world sir. is that thing still here? Oh, I mean, it's gone yes, now, thank God. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, how is it still here <laughs> all the way up until last year mm -hmm. when... It should have been gone mm -hmm. 50 years ago, right. 60 years. Right. Never should have been put up in mm -hmm. the first place. Mm -hmm. Because so many people don't understand the history of those right. monuments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I read a book about those monuments when I was in the Navy mm -hmm. that just uh, just opened my eyes to the whole thing. Those were not created after the Civil mm -hmm. War to honor Confederate mm -hmm. soldiers. Those things were made in the early 1900s right. to try to intimidate, to black, to intimidate people. black people. They, it's, it's, it, it's no different than if... If Germany posted <laughs> Nazi flags and, and statues of Hitler all over Berlin, That's right. it's no different. no different. The Confederates were an army that were out to enslave people. Mm -hmm. They were an army that fought for their money over people. Mm -hmm. It was it was a terrible thing. That should right. be a huge black eye mm -hmm. on America. Mm -hmm. But yet in the South, to feel better about losing, <laughs> they develop what is called we a celebrate religion. celebrate losing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the religion of the lost cause, right? Where they somehow made uh, Southern bells become a thing where, you know, white Southern virtue and the, 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 the good old generals that fought mm -hmm. for it. And, you know, all of this oh, creation, yeah. this myth. I'm, I'm really into folklore. <laughs> what I teach in college is mm -hmm. that there's this huge myth around the South and what mm -hmm. it was and and I mean you know I mean even I bought into it as a younger child because right. I didn't know no better. Right. I mean it's what was taught to me. Exactly. But when you step back and you look at it and you see how mm -hmm. uh, when I was when I was younger we were flying Confederate flags because to us it meant freedom right. and, and, and being a rebel and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But when you realize what it means to black people mm -hmm. it's like how can you do that? I mean, how, I mean, regardless of what it means to you, right, right. It's mm -hmm. important what it means to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, this Confederate monument and the fight over that, mm. just ridiculous. You know, it got moved out to somebody's private property. Right, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to run that story down, mm -hmm. and the guy didn't want to talk to me mm -hmm. at all. He didn't want, you know, right. he didn't want anything out there. Right. But because, okay, so if you're that ashamed of it, <laughs> and you don't want your name in the paper, then it's on your property. Why do you, why, why do you, do you have that? Right? I mean, I, sometimes, sometimes, Butch, I, I, I just, I sit back and I look at people and I just wonder how they got so stupid. I know. And how, and how, you know, you know, like. And, and, um, and we're not talking about um, uh, 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 poor folk or. Or folk that don't know in the bellas. My problem is, is educated folks. Oh well, the educated See, people that, that, use that's, that's the that's educated it. people <laughs> use the poor folk mm -hmm, on most mm -hmm. on every side. You exactly. know, and that's the that's mm -hmm. the um, mm -hmm. I, I've never understood, and and I and I, I guess I should have said this at the beginning, but I need to make sure folks <laughs> y'all know I'm talking uh, personally. I'm not representing. Uh, my my employers. Right, I, right, I have right. four jobs. I'm not representing <laughs> any of those <laughs> four <laughs> employers. But I've never understood. The Republican Party, as it is today, right. because because the Republican Party is a bunch of elitists, mm -hmm. rich folks mm -hmm. who use 
trigger word mm -hmm. and red meat mm -hmm. to trick all the good people mm -hmm. into following them. Yeah, right. right? Mm -hmm. So my problem with the Republican Party isn't like the normal everyday people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll, everybody in my family, with the exception of myself, is right. Republican. Right. I'm talking about my brothers. And right, sisters, right, right. They're all Republicans, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the I don't have a problem with the normal everyday Republican because they think they're right, fighting right. against the devil. They think they're right. fighting against all these things that are ruining America. <laughs> right. But at the end of the day, it's all about money. And then and these people at the top are tricking them. I mean, it's it, they're being fooled. They're duped. Right. They're duped into mm -hmm. voting for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like how did how did Donald Trump, a rich elitist New Yorker, mm -hmm. right? Everything mm -hmm. that Republican <laughs> Party hates, mm -hmm. right? right? How did he convince <laughs> my brother, right, mm -hmm. that that works nine to five job <laughs> and can't barely scrape a nickel together? Mm -hmm. How did he convince him that he was his representative? Right. You know, I heard Franklin <laughs> Graham, I, I had a lot of respect for Billy Graham, you know, mm -hmm. not so much for Franklin Graham, but I heard Franklin Graham one day say on TV that Trump was God's man in Washington. Mm -hmm. What in the world? <laughs> I mean, the guy, he has, at last count, 24 sexual assault lawsuits against him. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's bankrupted every business he's mm -hmm. ever been involved in. Mm -hmm. um, he's one step out of jail, but he screams right. locker right. up, right. you know, right. from his right. opponent. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's, I think, I think 100 years from now, mm -hmm. Right, we'll mm -hmm. look back on this time, mm -hmm. and everybody's just gonna scratch their head oh, oh, and yeah, be oh, like, yeah. "How, how did, how did that even happen? Right, did, did yeah, it might not even take a hundred years. Right, it might right. be I, I don't, think, I don't yeah. think it will. How did that even happen? Mm -hmm. Because, because what happens is, the GOP is really good with trigger words, mm -hmm. right? They, you know, uh, dude, I'm not so young that I, I was in a church. In Springfield, Missouri, I was. I, uh, I, I maybe I should have recapped my whole life to let people know, but I used to be a preacher years ago. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. Comes as a big shock to a lot of people. I was going to ask you but, about that. Yeah, I, I used to be a preacher years ago, and I was going to Bible school in Springfield, Missouri, it's a big Bible college. And there was a good school. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. I was in a church one night, and the preacher. And this was 1996. This ain't ancient history. Right. I'm not okay. talking the 40s or the 30s. Okay. 20, you know. Mm -hmm. 1996, he gave a lesson out of Nehemiah mm -hmm. about how blacks and whites shouldn't be together. Mm -hmm. Now, I guarantee you, if you go look at Nehemiah, there ain't nothing in there about why blacks and whites shouldn't be together. What, there, there's hardly a white dude in the entire Bible. I don't, you know, maybe maybe in Thessalonians or, or Ephesians somewhere there's a mm -hmm. white person, but there's very few white people in the, in the actual Bible. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, I was sitting in the audience, and, and I was just, I was just like, what, well, you know. <laughs> what is this guy talking about? I can't believe that mm -hmm. in this in 1996 this clown is saying this. Mm -hmm. But now you know we're in 2022, mm -hmm. and some people still mm -hmm. they still have to. I give up. Um, I might be going too far off the field. I don't know. But but in my critical thinking, you're saying we'll edit it down to the, to the parts where he talks about not liking. In my in my critical thinking class, I, I have a whole lesson about dogs and how I have all the kids in the class tell me what all the students, I should say, some of them aren't really kids. They're, they're kids to me. Right, right. You know, how many um, people have a dog? What kind of dog you have? And I go into how, you know, you can take a German Shepherd and a Chihuahua and mate them together and get a dog, right? Mm -hmm. Well, why is that? Because for all the thousands of different types of dogs we have in the world, mm -hmm. they're all dogs. Mm -hmm. Right, right. right? Their right, species right. is canine. Right. They're all dogs. Mm -hmm. They look that way because they've been bred that way. Mm -hmm. You take a big dog, you take two <laughs> small dogs and breed them together, you get a small dog. Right. And then you only let that breed with a small mm -hmm. dog, and pretty mm -hmm. soon you got a chihuahua, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with big dogs, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's, it's, so people are the same way, right? We're all people. You take you take any person from anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. any man from anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. you put them with any woman from anywhere in the world, they gonna have a baby. A baby, right? They nothing to stop it, right? So we we our surface differences, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not talking about culture, right, 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 right. But our surface differences mm -hmm. are all just the way that we bred over the years. Mm -hmm. Humans are all it's the human race, right? Mm -hmm. And Sometimes when I say that stuff to my family, I, you know, I get introduced to the door. But it's I don't understand why it's so hard for people to understand about that. And then also the other thing, I've, in the Navy, I've traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. I've been to 14 countries. I've seen all mm -hmm. these different people. 
And diversity is beautiful. You know, it's great. I mean, like when you go to a big city and you see all these different people. Right, right. You know, I was I went to Morocco, mm -hmm. and there's like uh, all these different people, and they and they got fruit hanging there, and mm -hmm. they got uh, pigs hanging up side side down for sale. Mm -hmm. There's all these different uh, cultures clashing together, mm -hmm. and, and 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 not clashing, but just like meeting together right, and all right. these different things. And I saw that in Italy, I saw it in Egypt, you know. Mm -hmm. And you come to America and. Mm -hmm. With the exception of New York, mm -hmm. L.A., you know, maybe the Atlanta, some of the bigger mm -hmm. cities, you get down here to to, to Rocky Mountain, <laughs> and you, you know, it's like what in the world, man? I mean, uh, that divide, like the first thing that Jeff Heron, you know, he's the late editor, oh, right, right, told yeah. me, oh, yeah, first thing that back. Jeff ever told me, my first day on the job, it was um, February two thousand fifteen. Jeff mm -hmm. said, Rocky Mountain is a is the largest city in two counties. Mm -hmm. It's the County seat of neither one of them. Right. And it's separated by the railroad tracks. And you've got, mostly you've got rich white folks over here, mm -hmm. and you got some poor black folks over here, mm -hmm. and they ain't never going to get along. <laughs> and I, I mean, I remember when he told me that, I was never thinking, like, why? You know, like, what? I mean, you know, what is the... And I don't know the answer. I'm not trying to pretend well, like well, I'm some great, you know, some great theolo theology, you know, right. some great thinker that knows the answers. But in my town in Spring Hope, um, we live here. There's a, a, a rich white lady that lives right here. Cause I know she's rich because well, I know she's white, but look at her. I know she's rich because she's got the only two story house in, in, in Spring Hope. Probably. So she's here. I've got a, a nice little old lady, that, black lady that lives on this side. Mm -hmm. I've got a Hispanic couple on the corner. Mm -hmm. And I've got um, a mixed race lives across the street. Mm -hmm. Now we're not the best of friends, but right. only because I'm a private person. Right, you know, right. I'm not, I don't go around right, and right, around right. with people. But I mean, I had a, uh, my car wouldn't start one day. Mm -hmm. The guy came out and helped me with the car. Mm -hmm. He had a flat tire one day. I helped mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. We all, we, we all coexist right. in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that I've had opportunities. The reason I live in Spring Hope is mm -hmm. when I got that job at the Telegram, mm -hmm. we, I had two weeks to find a place to live. Oh, okay. And that's the first place that first place. we find, you know. Mm -hmm. But I love it so much. I've moved three times mm -hmm. since I've been in Spring Hope. Mm -hmm. Same two blocks. I moved mm -hmm. from one house to a bigger house, mm -hmm. and then we decided that house was too big, mm -hmm. so I moved a block over and we mm -hmm. bought that house next okay. to the library, so okay. my wife could go to work, mm -hmm. walk to work without a problem. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to leave Spring Hope. Okay. But I'm not going to leave Spring Hope because of the atmosphere that's there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I mean, they're, you know, um, of course, there's there's problems everywhere. I wrote oh, a story a couple of, uh, last summer. Mm -hmm during the height of the pandemic about the police chief, mm -hmm. the white police chief put his hand on his gun when he was arguing with a black mm -hmm. town council. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, he didn't understand what he was doing. <laughs> but, you know, to me, and I like the guy, he's not mm -hmm. a bad guy, but I mean, come on, he's, 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 he's a mm -hmm. cop and he's uh, mm -hmm. he grew up in the environment, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are going to get angry at your boss, because she's his boss, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, she's, a, she's a town commissioner, right. she's his mm -hmm. boss. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get angry at your boss and put your hand mm -hmm. on your weapon in a what are you going to do on the side mm -hmm. of the street when there's no camera there, mm -hmm. you know? So, and I don't, I'm not, please, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this will get back to him. I'm not implying that he would ever do that. Right, right, what right, I'm right, saying right. is right. that I'm pointing out that there are always going to be problems, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I think that that we should begin to address these problems. Oh, yeah. And um, people, I, I, you know, I've said this before. I've heard a lot of white folks say that racism's over because mm. Obama was president. <laughs> right? I think we've seen in the last couple of years that racism is a long way from over. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and, but the other thing that I've never understood, and this, this kind of bleeds into immigration, mm -hmm. is that um, it doesn't hurt me when someone else elevates themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like like my brother, I got a brother that's a house painter, mm -hmm. and I love him to death, right? He's mm -hmm. a great guy. But he's obsessed right now that Mexicans have stole his mm -hmm. job. <laughs> but when I look at it, I used to paint with him, right? <laughs> so the Mexicans be working hard. Oh, right, right, right. And his idea of painting was like <laughs> shaking some ladders and then going to the lake for the day. You know, so it's it's not it's not an immigrant stealing his job. It's right. his lack of work ethic right, 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 that's right. killed his job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when someone else gets elevated, mm -hmm. 
it doesn't hurt me. And I think that is at the heart. I think that's at the heart of most Mm -hmm. racism Mm -hmm. is you got a white guy that has pretty much had it easy his whole life. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand that because he doesn't understand his own privilege. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. But he he's had it easy his whole life, Mm -hmm. and then. He suddenly he, he lacks the education he needs for the job, mm-hmm. or he doesn't have the experience he needs, or there's mm-hmm. something there that he doesn't have. Mm-hmm. And then he looks and he sees a, a minority mm-hmm. because pretty soon in this country whites <laughs> are going to be the minority. He sees a minority who excels, mm-hmm. and a- automatically he thinks that oh well you know it's because of he they gave him the they job, the job. You know, whatever. Yeah. Well, the truth yeah. is is that. <laughs> I think a lot of, I think at least on white folks' part, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. a lot of racism is just hatred of themselves oh, for yeah. not exceed, not not excelling like they thought that they should have. Right. You know, John Stombach has a wonderful quote that um, my son just shared it with. Me. I'm sorry, my child. Mm-hmm. He's, he's non-binary, so I got to be careful. About <laughs> right. it. My child just shared that with me the other day, and it said, um, "I just said he's non-binary. That, they're, they're non-binary." <laughs> they're non-binary. Um, and we're going to get into religion and black folks here right, and, and, okay, and, and gay in here in a minute because I really want to talk right, about that. Right, right. But he shared this statement John Steinbeck said with me in the 20s mm-hmm. was that most Americans consider themselves to be temporarily disadvantaged millionaires. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how true is that? We all, I mean, like, everyone thinks that they should be rich. Everyone thinks that they should have money. And that it's just a matter of time. I think that's why the lottery is so successful. Right. It's just a matter of time before they get that money. And they're mad at other people, mm-hmm. you know, who, mm-hmm. when I look back on my life, I'm 48 years old. Mm-hmm. I could have done things a lot better mm-hmm. if I wanted money. Right, right. You know, right. if I if money was what right. I was about, mm-hmm. if what I wanted, I could have done mm-hmm. things a whole lot. Yeah, me too. You know, but it, but that's never really been. Mm-hmm. As long as I'm, as long as the bills are paid, and and, right. and, and as long as I got air conditioning, mm-hmm. and, and as long as I'm sitting on the couch mm-hmm. watching TV at the end of the day, mm-hmm. you know, I'm happy. I, right. I've never. I like having a new car mm-hmm. recently because right. with all the driving I do, right, right, right. I traded in my. I bought a 2015 Elantra mm-hmm. new. Right, mm-hmm. first new car I've ever owned. Mm-hmm. I put three hundred thousand miles on it when I traded it in mm-hmm. last year for another car. Okay, so I mean I do a lot of driving. Right, right. So too, mm-hmm. I like that new car because in the old days I broke down a lot. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of car problems because I couldn't afford. Mm-hmm. You know I could afford a car that lasted a year. Or right. Two, you know, mm-hmm. but if I is I don't. I don't want to be rich. Right. I mean, you know, I, you know. Don't get me wrong. Well, well, I don't. I, don't, I I'll take I, that money and I have fun with right. it. But I mean, I know folks, and they're probably going to watch this. Mm-hmm. That they want the money for the sake of having the money. money. What is that good for? <laughs> and what is you know, <laughs> what is having? You know, what is impressing mm-hmm. somebody else that don't care about right. you? Get anyway. Mm-hmm. And that was that was always <laughs> one problem that I had with. And I know I'm way off the field mm-hmm. here, but like with the rap culture where it was all about money. Mm-hmm. But I understand where that was coming from because right, right. it was coming from a position of not having, having money. Not having so money. now they're saying that they have money. You know, mm-hmm. Tupac has a really good, uh, where he's talking about people being jealous of him with his mm-hmm. cell phone. Mm-hmm. And my kids were listening to that the other day and they're like, that don't make sense. Everybody has a cell phone. <laughs> I said, I know, but that song was written in the 90s when exactly. everybody didn't have, have a cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone until like 2003, <laughs> right? right? So everybody didn't have a cell phone mm-hmm. when he said that. Mm-hmm. And so that's... And see, that's the so, problem today. And see, that's what's wrong with Rocky Mount. See, I had told Andre years ago, I said, man, we need to sit down. It's like we're doing now. And I've been reaching out to people all uh, um, for the longest time, and, and and you accept it. And I told people, uh, and I told Andre, I said, we got to sit down, talk about history, because people don't know the history. They're starting right here, but right. it didn't start right here. It right. started back there. That's and right. see, the thing with Rocky Mount, uh, Chris Miller, um, she started coming ground. And she started out with the um, either the business section or the religious section, and it was vice versa. Nobody will uh, participate. So then she opened up to the community. So when my group went through, we kept it going. So we were doing things. We were, we were, we was um, uh, challenging the city. We were looking at their policies and procedures, making changes and stuff. And um, and so we, we you know, we we we've been there. But um, like I told Andre, I said, man, we got to get the. the but we live in a we live in an area where white folks would rather create their own town. Right. Than being part of Rocky Mountain. Well, you know, see, they they well, create Red Oak. Oh yeah. And they create these towns out there. These well, see, paper towns with that. Because they they create paper towns because they don't want to be a part of a city that's 
basically run by black folks. Well, even see, though that's the population with. calls for that. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, see, that's what I was doing with that. Because, see, in that Common Ground group, um, matter of fact, you talking about Wesleyan College, the, the, the librarian, retired librarian, or that we used to meet at his house. We used to go around to different people's houses uh, over in Candlewood, white and black, and we would meet and talk about issues that concern everybody. And so when we are, uh, I'll never forget, at the Church of the Good Shepherd over here by the uh, event center, when um, it was about to become a black majority, the white guy told us that day, he said, uh, the white people said they are going to leave town if, the, if y'all become a black majority. This is what the white man told us. Oh, so we know where this was going. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, 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 uh, people don't don't know the story, and and so um uh, and, and that's what they did. They left, but it's something uh, make me think something is coming coming here that they they want it back. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. It must be something that they that, that they see coming because they are really fighting yeah. to get the city back for some reason. I don't I don't which, understand. Which which just feels <laughs> on 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 both sides. Right. Mm -hmm. It feels like a pointless fight mm -hmm. because um, one, it is what it is. Right. Two, <laughs> um, you know, like, okay, like, like with, I mean, you got to get real, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you don't oh, get yeah. real, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless, right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of white folks will sit in their living room mm -hmm. and they'll watch the evening news mm -hmm. and they'll see a lot of black folks <laughs> in trouble with crime. Right. Uh -huh. And they'll say, well, man, black people do crime, right? I mean, right. it's mm -hmm. just, so, and then you had a lot of white flight, like you talked oh, yeah, about, right. that ruined a lot of places. Mm -hmm. But no one ever like looks at the socioeconomic mm -hmm. situation behind mm -hmm. that crime. And I, and I, you know, I'm not excusing crime right. at all. I don't. I, mean, I write. I write about a lot. You know, people okay. I always get that all the time about why are you putting black people in the newspaper for murder. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, when they when the guy don't murder somebody, <laughs> then he won't be in the newspaper. Right. Mm -hmm. I, you know. But what I'm saying is that um, a lot of times. White America created the situation exactly. mm -hmm. that put, and, and I'm not talking about slavery, right, or, right, right. Wrong, or no, even, no, no. I'm not even talking about Jim Crow, right, I'm talking right. about stuff in the last, right. I'm talking about crack, mm -hmm. you know what, I mean we know the government introduced crack to oh, the yeah. poor exactly. I mean we know they did, mm -hmm. that's a fact, it's mm -hmm. been proven. Um, so how can you be that upset? Mm -hmm. With a crackhead, <laughs> knowing that he's that <laughs> way because somebody the CIA pumped him, yeah, you know, and, and that's not a conspiracy, folks. <laughs> that is true, <laughs> and and it's it's um, no one. I'm, I'm glad that that thing that you were talking about about meeting at people. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's that's <laughs> good. I mean, that's people never know it. See, and Chris Miller was the the brainstorm behind that, and 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 um, we, they, they um the initial meets we started out at Wesleyan College. That's where we met at. And then, like I say, after the, the, the class was over, we met like um, maybe about six weeks. And so after it was over, then we went out and we kept our group going. Well, I'm gonna be more. I'm gonna be more about that kind of thing mm -hmm. moving forward because you know I, I I had an obligation to the Telegram to be a reporter. Reporters mm -hmm. aren't supposed to have opinions. Mm -hmm. you know? I, right. I, right. I, mm -hmm. I slipped up sometimes. But I mean, I was, <laughs> you know, I, I had well, an that's, obligation. That's the human nature. Right. right. I had an obligation as as mm -hmm. a reporter. You know, to report. But as I as I uh, grow out of that into new things, mm -hmm. um, I'm really interested. You know, like when they had when when Cooper Blackwell did the the thing down there at the monument. Right. You mm -hmm. know, I showed up and um, I brought my kids with me, mm -hmm. and they wanted to come. My, right. my two youngest sons. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wanted them to see that mm -hmm. because um, it is always. Them, them Confederate monuments have always oh, been yeah, oh, for yeah, years. Oh, yeah. you know, they, and the one in Tarboro. Yeah, you know. the one in Tarboro. Mm -hmm. Um, and look, when they took the one, one out, listen, the one in Wilson's at the courthouse. Right, right, right. So, I mean, that one needs to go yeah, needs to yesterday, go. Uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. 20 years, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the, 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 the thing that, like, my, one of my older, I got five older brothers, oh, right? Okay. So when I say my older brother, somebody, it sounds <laughs> like, wow, that guy, that older brother did a lot. But I mean, I'm talking about a different one every time. <laughs> okay. But, you know, he used to, like, he... When I would talk about this kind of stuff when mm -hmm. we were younger, he would he would make fun of me and call me a crusader, okay. and everything like that. And you know, as I get older, and I, and I, it's not that at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying mm -hmm. to do anything special. I'm not trying to be anything special. Right. I'm simply saying we should all be thinking the way I do. Right. There's a problem. Mm -hmm. There's a problem that we all don't think like that. Right. 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 I mean, mm -hmm. it's not. It's. 
One thing that really upsets me is when I get into a group of white guys and all of a sudden there's this sense that it's okay to say certain things right. mm -hmm. that I might agree with them when they don't even know me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And that's... That's, you know that happens in the black community too. Oh, wait, well, that's, that, I, I, I'm, I'm doing that right now because my thing is, you know, you don't know me. You, why do you feel comfortable right. uh, uh, saying things around me? Just like you. We got like to break down to where we treat people as right. people and not. Well, we got to stand up for truth. It's just like yourself. Uh, when people say, I said no. Uh, on that that we disagree on, we disagree on, but when, I'm not going to sit around and let somebody say, no, no, K is this, when I know that that, what they talk about, is a lie. But uh, see, people you call me Special say, C. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, that, but you know what that was it for. It should have been Special K, though. <laughs> but you know what that was? That was, no, it, it was to, I agitate. Yeah, I know that. So that was, you but you good. know, but you, you know, but I did that because you should have a shirt, t-shirt, man of a thousand t-shirts. You should have one that says provocateur on there because that's well, what you do. Well, see, you're a see, good provocateur. Well, see, when I did special C, I did it to make people wonder, and then they just took it and went off with it, and then later on I had to come back and say what it was. Oh, I thought it was very interesting <laughs> that, that at that time you, you're you're more or less one guy fighting. Oh man, and I, man. I, I, I just I ate it up like popcorn. I thought, you know, I mean, I thought it was great. It, it, I don't know what the answer is for Rocky Mountain. Well, let, let me let me let me get this part uh, so we can wrap it up because we got to do this again sometime. Because see, what people don't understand is they'll find out. The main thing is we got to sit down and talk to each other. We'll find out what we got in common, where we really where, where we really stand. Oh sure, and and, and, that, and that's what. That's what don't take I mean, place. It's what, it's what Kennedy said, mm -hmm. right? We mm -hmm. all share the same air. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We all want the best for our children. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... That, that, that's let's it. Let's start with that. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the... Um, we need to do that. Exactly. And white people need to begin to recognize their privilege. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, I mean, like, it, to me, okay, do... do did you ever believe in Santa Claus when you was a kid? Yes. And when you stopped, <laughs> right. you never went back. It changed your world, right? right? You never went back to believe in Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no adult that says, wait a minute, I, I think I'm going to start believing in Santa Claus. So white privilege is the same way. Exactly. Once mm -hmm. you find out, the once you figure it out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it changes your worldview and you don't go back. And that's the problem when and, you don't change. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people don't want to. They don't, they don't want to see that. You know, I have already it's for my family, especially my two sisters, all the time mm -hmm. about um, they don't recognize it, mm -hmm. you know. And I, and I say it's. Um, she's like, I, you know, I don't have a problem. I was like, yeah, because you can go into a grocery store mm -hmm. or a gas station mm -hmm. without the guy thinking you're going to steal something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And until you get, you know, you can you can see a police officer and not be afraid of exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Until you get that, mm -hmm. until until you can internalize that that is a thing. Mm -hmm. We we're not really going to get better. That's right. Because so many people want in in the United States, so many people want black and white to to, to automatically be equal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When we've had generations and generations mm -hmm. of white people mm -hmm. being bad to black people. That's right. And it's not. And see, that's I know a lot of folks that are gonna probably just watch this to see what I say, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're gonna be that's upset right. about that. Mm -hmm. But what I, what I'm really trying to say is that. Um, as people, we're all equal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Every I don't see anybody any better than me. Mm -hmm. I don't see any That's person right. any better mm -hmm. than me, whether they're whether, and that is not that I don't, there's not a racist bone. You know, right. when, when a white person says there's not a racist bone in my body, they racist. When, when a white person says I don't mean to say something racist, but, but they're right. about to say something racist. Right? So I'm not coming from that area. What I'm saying is that mm -hmm. I've lived long enough mm -hmm. and I've met a lot of different people mm -hmm. you know I've been the only white guy and mm -hmm. I went a guy took me to a, a Jamaican bar in New York City mm -hmm. one time and no in Philadelphia I'm sorry mm -hmm. when we were stationed in Philly I was mm -hmm. the only white guy in the entire mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. it was like when I walked in the door like the music you know like in those movies mm -hmm. when somebody walks in the door the music stops and everything. I mean that's what it was you know but so in the military overseas I've been the only me and a couple of guys mm -hmm. would be the only Americans in that entire town, mm -hmm. you know, until people see that right, and experience right. that, what it's mm -hmm. like to be different, mm -hmm, considered mm -hmm. not different, but to be thought of as right, different. Right. Well, I don't know that we're going to get anywhere. <laughs> and and education is the really only right. way that that oh, yeah. that helps. Mm -hmm. that, that's what. 
Education is what helps people escape from their upbringing. You're right. My wife, Michelle, now, really funny situation mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. She's Creole. Okay. Right? She's from Louisiana. Okay. She has, Creole people have Native American, they have Hispanic, mm -hmm. they have French, and they have black in them. Mm -hmm. But no one really knows how much of what, right? They've, okay. they've been, right. <laughs> there's an old saying in Louisiana, that how do you know who your daddy is except your mama told you, right? right. There's, 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 it's been mixed around so much down mm -hmm. there, no one knows what it is, right. which is, I think, a good thing. Right? right, right. So, but she was raised in a Pentecostal church. Okay. And she was raised by people who hated everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So, even to this day, having been married to me all these years mm -hmm. and having seen things herself and, and she's an educated woman mm -hmm. with a college degree and a librarian and everything mm -hmm. else she tells me oftentimes that even to this day it's hard for her to break out of right. the stereotypes that she puts on that's right mm -hmm. that she was taught mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know she was taught that as a child so it's hard to that's right that's so right. even with an education mm -hmm. even with a life of experience mm -hmm. it's still hard for her to break out of stereotypes sometimes. Mm -hmm. So imagine the people that have been taught nothing but hatred their whole life. That's right. Uh, still live in it today mm -hmm. and still think they're better than everybody. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know? So we have to, um, we just have to get past that. Oh, yeah. You know, which brings me to the thing yeah, I really yeah, want to talk about. All right, okay. But before you get that part, let me let me do this. And um, what, what, what you probably don't know, um, and, and, and what a lot of people don't know, when Andre came on the scene back um he had bought the house on falls road mm -hmm. prestigious white uh man house i can't think of his name right now um but when he bought the house and wanted to make it an adult home for people to stop by and drop off their family so they could go shopping or do whatever during the day not stay there forever you know all night right and somehow things went wrong so that never um, I've always heard that's why he ended up on the couch. Right, right, that is right. But he came to the NAACP at that time. They were fighting to get the um, seat on the rise. They went to Philadelphia. He and the NAACP president. Now I was in the NAACP. Andre came. All this stuff. He came behind me because uh, I think he's like fifty, early fifties, uh, fifty four, something like that. But in, my, 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 I'm around fifty four, I guess. But anyway, when he came, people don't know the real Andre. They think they know the real Andre. No, they don't. They don't know the real Andre. They, they, they don't know him. I'm certainly, those you. folks on Facebook and hating. Right. They don't know the real. They don't Andre. know the real Andre. They don't. They don't know the real Andre. Wait, 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 what I'm saying? They know is, that. That's why uh, Nehemiah Smith uh, took exception when I called Andre a character, mm -hmm. and I said I didn't call him a character. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah, call yeah, him a character yeah. because Andre is a character. Mm -hmm. He's an entertaining guy. Mm -hmm. He he he. Uh, he doesn't mind the, uh, much like me and you, mm -hmm. he doesn't mind the abuse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, he's got a thick skin. He oh, can yeah. take it and all that. But, like, people assume that I hate Andre mm -hmm. for some I, for some unknown reason. Oh, yeah, when before, there would be, yeah, uh -huh. there, but there would be many times during the meetings when Andre and myself would be texting each other. Right, right. right. You know, saying, you know, like, what's wrong with this guy? Right. What, you know, so, you're right. I, you but, probably but, know, but, but, you but, know but, him better than me because you've known him longer right. and everything. But but I know what you're saying when you say that that people. But but, but I'm not even talking about from the standpoint you were talking about. I'm taking you back further. Right. Okay. Andre was have toned it down when Andre came. You think about it. He had just came out of college. He was working at Edgecombe Community College. He was teaching GED. That's why he knows so many people. He was teaching the young and the old. Okay. When the thing went down, he became vocal. Edgecombe Community College gave him two reviews in one year. I told him, I said, they're going to fire you. I said, because you're an you outspoken Negro, and you ain't supposed to be doing this. You got this, this prestigious house over here on Falls Road. They don't like that. I said, so now get ready. They're going to fire you. I told him, I said, they're going to fire you. And they did. So what you do? You, you took him away from his income. Uh, people in the community, when they wanted something done, they called on him. And, and and so he was fighting this battle. Uh, I had to tell Andre, calm down, cool it down. They don't know the real Andre. Andre have cooled down. If he was the Andre he was back then, they couldn't. They they wouldn't be able to stand him. I know. I felt his frustration. Um. So um. They fired him. So then he, he, he out of income. He had that house over there. And so over the years, then he when he filed for um 
he filed for the council to get up there to make changes. So what did he do he, when he filed? They went after his residency um, um, on WHIG TV, the Mark Bowlers, the Jerry Fishers, uh, even Roosevelt Hees. Roosevelt Hees was mad because <laughs> because he knew me. Uh, I see, cause see, Andre got a lot of haters because of me. Folk don't realize that because I was out there for you know, um, 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 and and and, and Andre got a lot of haters because of me, and I got a lot of haters because I know Andre. But but the thing about that is, Andre he came to the Democratic Party. Okay, uh, it ended up he and Roosevelt was up for first vice chair. Okay, Andre won. He been mad ever since then. So when this residency thing came out, then. Roosevelt were ready to jump on. Andre ended up had to sue the county because of Roosevelt and, 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 and um, uh, uh, Gladys Shelton, which was the chair of the party at, at, at the board of elections at that time. And, and, and so they, this guy was angry. He had all right to be angry, but right. he carried it out the right way because what he did, he got in the NAACP. He got on the council to make changes to help everybody. It wasn't about him. I went through that with him. I used to be like, man, I feel this guy frustration. So then over the years, he got to fight that battle. Then people call him because they know he's vocal. He got to fight their battles. And and, and so it, he was hurting because it felt like everybody turned their back on him. Uh, uh, he done helped so many people. I was the, right now on the city council. Nobody has been there longer than I have other than the attorney. So when people talk about I'm supporting them, no, I was there before they even came. Um, uh, Ruben Blackwell has been the longest one. I think he's the longest uh, one serving now. But see, Angela Bryant was up there. Uh, Miss, um, um, the lady where they, they named the, um, the train station out of Helen Gay. And, um, and, and um, the man that died, I can't think of his name right now, the way they, they did a rip off, they, they uh, appointed Ruben Blackwell to his seat. I forget, I forget what the black man named. But I told folk, this thing with the Rocky Mountain City Council is pressing on me because I was there. I was serving um, on the need board. I was the vice chair of Need Incorporated right here in Rocky Mountain. I was the chair of the uh, uh, Edgecombe County Democratic Party. Um, uh, Mr. Hobbs, Mr. and Ms. Hobbs, uh, William Hobbs, they were in Candlewood, one of the houses that we went to to meet. Uh, they're elderly people, 80 some years old now, and, and the reason why we stopped those meetings because those people got elderly, their mamas and stuff were still living, they had to take care of their family. But Mr. Hobbs was the chair of the Rocky Mount, I mean, of the Nash County NW, I mean, um, uh, Democratic Party. I was the chair of the Edgecombe County Democratic Party. I was appointed because someone stepped down. So it made my life easier because he had his meeting before I did, so what I did, I got with him. So I, I looked like a professional when I got about the Edgecombe County right. because I, I, you know, I followed his lead. His wife was on the Rocky Mountain Human Relations Commission, and that's how I started going to the uh, city council meetings. He was the uh, treasurer of NEED, so when um, um, the, the NEED director was going to step down, attending his resignation, so we all got together, was going to uh, own it, then he wanted to back out. So Nash County Commissioners uh, removed Mr. Hobbs, the treasurer, from the board, Edgecombe County Commissioners came over the night of the meeting. We was gonna vote to vote Mr. Uh, 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 the director out. They set me down so I couldn't vote. So people don't understand the fight that we have done. You know that that we've been about trying to make sure Edgecombe. You you, you seen how Need went through all that all that stuff. Well, if we had a, been able to screen it out back then, Need would have been way ahead where it is now. You know right. they don't even change the name of it now. But but we was trying to clean it up back then. But no, uh, um, they, 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 the, the powers to be, they, they stopped us. But, but like I said, get back to Andre, I, he's hurting right now, and people just don't understand uh, um, what, what he's been through. And, and, I, and I sort of feel sorry for him because even myself, with what I do, people call me. I'm up all night talking to people. People call me all the time, won't, won't, want me to help them. And, and I'm not even getting paid. And, and, and then to see how people treat me. But the main thing is for me is, how people sit back and allow folks to, to try to discredit you and they know it ain't right. That's what I'm saying. Like me and you, uh, I don't care what kind of differences we got. Even the Roosevelt Higgs or anybody, if I'm sitting here and you lying on them, I'm going to stop you. But that ain't the world we live I, in. I think, I think um, <laughs> I, I probably should take notes here and all that, Dance. But I, my second oldest son, Titus, mm -hmm. 
he has this innate sense of fairness mm -hmm. that I have seen in very few people, right. no matter of their age. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there's this 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 common thing of kids not helping their mom right. mm -hmm. with work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I would I did it. You know, right. I mean? uh -huh. oh, yeah. kids are lazy. They're mm -hmm. inherently lazy. Mm -hmm. They don't want to mm -hmm. get up and do. You know, they want to play video games. That's right. But my son will he will help people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and he will he mean, will not yeah. allow his mother to do work that he could do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And you know, I look at him, and I just I wish that if we all had a little right. bit more of him mm -hmm. in us, exactly. You know, because mm -hmm. I'm I I feel like I'm kind of fair person, right? Right. You know, mm -hmm. I don't I don't like automatically um, think somebody's bad right. or, or or whatever could just because what someone told me. Mm -hmm. You know, I tend to judge for myself and all that. Mm -hmm. But when I look at him, he's like me times a hundred. Mm -hmm. And if more people were like that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'd all be a lot better off. Oh, yeah. And the last thing I want to say about that part, because uh, like I said, we got to get back together again. But people don't understand that when Andre went on the council, he and Ruben was not. They were going after each other. It ain't like he went on the council to, to, to be there with Ruben. Right. You know, we, 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 um, you know, this is a long story. We, we you know, you're you're right, though, about the, the, I mean, that stuff's interesting because the, the history of it all. Right. And they have been on the council for, what, 20 years now? Well, so, yeah, so almost years, 20 uh -huh. years. So, I mean, it, yeah. it is a lot of history there. And then in the newspapers, mm -hmm. there's a lot of turnover. Right. You know, mm -hmm. by the nature of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe to the good, maybe to the bad. Right. I think mm -hmm. I think some stories need the history. Mm -hmm. But then there are also some times right. where mm -hmm. you don't need You don't need the history. You know, because oh, yeah. oh, if yeah. you don't... A really quick example mm -hmm. was, you know, the Telegram had committed to not putting crime on the front page. Right, right, which right. Which I think was a mistake. Oh, yeah, it is. You know? it is. And um, when the new guy come along... Right, mm -hmm. who wasn't aware of the history, why that agreement was mm -hmm. made, and all that stuff. He put mm -hmm. a stop to it. That's right. So it goes a little. It goes both ways, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, because sometimes the history can turn into the good old boys club. Oh yeah, you know, really mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. so, so, but it is interesting though what you said about Andre and Ruben, because mm -hmm. I think right now the way people perceive them is that there's not a inch of sunlight between them. Right. right. But if they mm -hmm. were, if they didn't always get along, that that's to me very interesting. And, and then also people don't understand that. <laughs> I'm the type of person uh, sometimes uh, we don't even talk because I'm the type of person I don't care I'm, I'm about what's right I don't care if you get mad at me or not so sometimes we go sometimes when I say okay no I don't agree with that and, and, and we don't talk but when we pick back up like like this yes, when we see each other we, 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 we talk just like have anything happen but people got this thing that just because you're associated with certain folk like I told my mom and I used to be on a lot of committees together. And I told, like I said, I'm straight about the book. This is what I was talking about earlier. When I went in that room, she was no longer my mama. I would respect her. But we was there to serve a purpose. So I disagreed with her. I, I um, you know, I, I, I couldn't go along with, with, with something if it wasn't right. right. So that's what I was talking about. Well, I, I think the, about the, the folks decisions. that... The, the the, the white folks that are obsessed with Andre are just wasting their time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. You know I mean? They, and, and, and they might even be playing into his hands. Well, well the thing about it is... If they're, um, so, if they're so hell-bent on everything Andre, mm -hmm. they miss all the other stuff that's oh, yeah. going on around them. And this, this town... I know Andre probably hate to hear this, mm -hmm. but this town is bigger than Andre. <laughs> right. You know, right. There's, there's a lot more... I don't know how his ego feels about that, but, I mean, there's a lot more oh, going yeah. on in this town oh, yeah. than Andre Knight. And that is really to kind of bring the whole conversation full circle. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not here anymore. Right. Because I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I, I couldn't do the Andre watch mm -hmm. anymore. I got, mm -hmm. Even though I contributed to it. Right. Mm -hmm. But I only contributed to it because I felt like, um, you know, I'm going to cover what, what needs and, to and be covered. And Andre covered. sometimes needs to be covered. And that's what I always But, mm -hmm. but um, it just, man, this town just needs to... Uh, well, when it comes to Andre, what, what, what people got to understand when it comes to Andre or any leader, and see, back in the day when the Rocky Mountain Telegram used to have a, a page up there where you could go in and start conversation. No, nope, I found it. Because, see, I tell you, I was researching stuff. So I used to go in there and post stuff. Well, then people start doing it. Wilson, Wilson paper had it. Matter of fact, Rocky Mountain cut theirs out. Wilson kept on doing this for a while. But you could go up there and, 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 and um, they even created a category. You go up there and start a conversation. 
Well, people used to come up there and so they talked about well, Andrea Rubin, Andrea Rubin and, and, and stuff. And I was like, y'all guys got to say something. I said, because if they only hear one side of the story, that's what people believe. So, make a long, long story short, when it comes to elected officials or anybody, if your supporters are quiet, that's, 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 yeah. that's a killer. You can only be yourself, but you cannot promote yourself to a certain degree. So that's what's going on in Rocky Mount. The noise that's going on is from a few haters. It ain't but a few of them. It ain't all white folk. It's right. just a few haters. Right. But the, the supporters are silent. And they're silent because they got children in school. They got to go to work tomorrow. And they feel like they'll be retaliated against. And that stuff is real. Because when I first got active in the NWCP, um, um, and I tell people all the time, I got active in this stuff not because people come to the NWCP because they have an issue. I went, I had to go find the NWC. We didn't know where they were. And so I went to be a, a voice for folk that were afraid to speak. Because I grew up, I never had, my mom and dad worked a public job, plus we ran the farm. So, you know, I never wanted for anything. But what I wanted to be, because my family always gave, my dad had a garden, or we cooked, or people died in the community, we always gave. So that's where I get the giving from. So what I did, I wanted to find out where I could fit in and be a voice for people that were afraid to speak. Because, see, people don't understand that, just like Dr. King, see, people don't understand, I, I, I worried my mama to death, I actually worried her to death. Yeah, just I, I believe that. I did. I, I have really, no I problem did. believing that. I did. Though. I did right. because I was not afraid to speak up. And I challenged folk. And I'm going to say this, and people probably have forgotten it when I'm talking about writing my telegraph. Uh, Commissioner T.C. Cherry, and I'm a good friend with the family and stuff, but he used to write articles about people stealing, black folks stealing at Wayne Dixie uh, on Fevery Road. That's why you get a, you have a lot of um, stuff about Edgecombe County, where I used to write back and say, and respond to that. And I would say, because I worked, I used to, <laughs> I, I was farming up until, two, I farmed up until 2010. Um, I worked at Honeywell, Second shift, got off at night, went to work to a convenience store in Pine. I ain't had to do all this. I'm the only child with mom and dad. Had. I, they bought me anything I wanted. But because I started working at five years old, <laughs> that was my mentality to work. So, um, and then on top of that, when I got off at 12 or 15, my oldest daughter, mama moved to Maryland because she didn't want me to see my child. I would leave Honeywell at night at 12 or 15, drive to Pine Top, Lay down about two hours, get on the road at four o'clock in the morning, had to drive four hours one way to pick up my daughter. That sounds like and musket. And come right back. That sounds like musket. I, <laughs> you got know? Four, I got four jobs now. <laughs> right. I can't give, I, did, I, don't, I, I can't give it up. I mean, like, uh, um, okay. Okay. So when do I get to say what I want to say? Let me go ahead on now because I, look, you know what? What are we at? I we thought we were meeting at 5 o'clock. What time, time is it? It's uh, 5.22, oh, and then I got to be in Canada at 7.30. You're going to do this whole thing, you're going to chop it up. Oh, no, 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 we're going to do the whole thing. What are you going to do? You're going to post the whole thing? Yeah, this is this is, this is all you're you going to post the whole thing. Uh, uh, yeah, you say no, I'm you saying you're going to post this whole oh, thing. The whole thing is all You're not going to edit it out? No, I'm not editing anything. All right, I have a question for you. I don't edit stuff. I have a question for you. Okay. Um... Do you need to get that? It's going to like on no, 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 it ain't, it ain't doing it. Might be me. All right. My question is, honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't understand mm -hmm. the black community's resistance to gay rights. Okay. Now, I, I guess, I mean, I do understand it because mm -hmm. it's, it's based a lot on the church mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But then again, I don't really understand the black community's uh, heavy church involvement either mm -hmm. because uh, history teaches us that uh, religion was uh, the Christian religion was taught mm -hmm. to slaves basically as a way to uh, uh, placate them. Okay. So I really, I just, I, I, I don't understand. So mm -hmm. I'm not criticizing. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Step one, I don't understand uh, how Christianity is so important in the black community, mm -hmm. knowing its origins. Right, and then I don't understand the resistance of the black community when it comes to gay rights, considering that gays are minorities mm -hmm. who are often mistreated. Mm -hmm. And I would, I'm assuming maybe I'm exposing my ignorance, but I'm assuming that blacks might know a little bit about 
that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just I don't understand it. I'm trying I'm trying to understand it, but I don't I don't get why. Um, it seems to me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It appears to me. I mean, I can only go by what I, right, right, you right. know, but it appears to me that, that gays are just not as accepted in the black community. And I feel like it's based on religion. I mean, am I, am I, am I, am well, I, am well, I, I don't base there? You, you're like, saying you don't think it's accepted? Yeah. I, I, I well, feel, from I feel my like, circle, I mean, it is. I mean, I have a lot of family members there. Are, okay. Well, see, I'm um, learning. Right. right. See, I so, so, I mean, for me, and going back to years ago, finding early on about gays, um, you know, I mean, go way back. I mean, to me, it has been accepted. In, in, I say it's from County. I don't know about. Right. Well, I mean, that's how we can. I we mean, can talk about um, what we know. And, and and I mean, I've been I've been in circles with them, um, 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 black and white, and um, I mean, so. So I, mean, okay. I, I haven't so, seen I haven't seen that. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm learning. I mean, it, it's just <laughs> perception wise. Right. Okay, and right. I can. I mean, we can only go by what we know. Right. Country. But it always seemed to me like uh, because uh, you know the the. Uh, being gay is supposed to be a crime. Right. I'm mean, not a crime. Right. Seeing right. 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 the Bible. So it just always seemed to me like the black community was less uh, accepting of of gay folks. Um, but maybe I'm wrong about wait, it. Wait, wait, but wait. I still I'm still really puzzled about uh, how Christianity became so prevalent in the black community. I mean, well, it's, well, in, in Spring Hope, there's yeah. man. In Spring Hope, there's more churches than people. Right, right. right you know, right. and and mm -hmm. there's a block. Mm -hmm. Now Spring Hope isn't. Spring Hope doesn't have a white community and a black. Right, right, right. What right. they have is is like a not so poor mm -hmm. and poor. Mm -hmm. Right, you know what I mean? Because it's all mixed up. In oh yeah, so. oh yeah. Uh -huh. But in the poor part, mm -hmm. there's like four churches on one block. <laughs> right, right. You know, I mean. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you need four church? I mean, like, <laughs> and, and they're all Christian too. It's right, not like right, it's. Right. A synagogue or nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. so like, could they? Those folks couldn't have found in in one, you know, in two churches maybe. Why they gotta have four? Well, well, that's and I just, I've like never that. understood. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking maybe that you could enlighten me. And, and, well, that's, that's something I have an issue with. And like, I, um, and I don't have nothing against. Oh yeah, but but religion. You know, I mean, I, te I teach it well. I don't have nothing against religion. Right. But I, I, I do just sort of like I'm puzzled by. Um, you know, the Southern Baptist Convention mm -hmm. was created because the Baptists in the South wanted to keep their slaves, right. and the Baptists in the North didn't want to. Right. So, I mean, and like, any time that slavery was defended, mm -hmm. somebody always showed up with a Bible to do it. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, I, and I know that was a long time ago, mm -hmm. but even, you know, not even, remember, mm -hmm. if we go back... I told you in 1996, right, uh -huh. I sat in a church uh -huh. where the guy said that blacks and whites shouldn't uh -huh. marry, uh -huh. right, based on some Bible verse right, that he invented right, 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 out right. of the cherry picked <laughs> out of the blue. But I have never understood, um, uh, you know, there's, why, why would someone choose the religion of their oppressor? That's what I'm trying well, well, to say. Well, see, it, 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 I mean, it, to me, it's, I mean, I, I struggle with that myself and, 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 and been questioning. But it to me, some are using it as a business. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's where the issue is. Oh, that knows no common <laughs> right. no, That, that <laughs> knows no bounds <laughs> oh, when yeah. it comes to preachers <laughs> using that money as churches <laughs> for money. No and, 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 and that's a big problem. It's, it's a serious problem. I mean, it, it, we need to change our mindset. It's just like going some some go to church and stay all day when it don't take but an hour, you know. Yeah. Well, stuff, we you see know? we see in communities, uh, we see in downtrodden communities. We see a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. We don't see a lot of schools. Right. A lot and, of okay, what are they? What are, are they putting out? You got all these churches on the corner. So yeah, it's, it's like my my thing. Like I, I just told someone the other day, uh, and then a lot of them they they um they have no mortgage so. Why we don't see a boys and why we don't see them come together and build a boys and girls club? You know, yeah. different things in the black community. See, and, and, and see that's why I got into another reason why I got into advocacy because 
I was at a church. I'm not gonna call the name today, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get there because I'm uh, but um because I'm this one working on educating folks. But I was at a church and the man pastor a million dollar church and he didn't have his own attorney. So I said, now if he don't have his own attorney, if I get in trouble, hell, I'm gonna be in trouble. This man don't have his right. own attorney, so I gotta get out here and, and learn what I need to learn so I can be a voice for myself. Right. You know, so and, and and that's one of the reasons why I am really into advocacy because people need a voice. I was uh, um 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 man, <laughs> I started out advocating for the schools. Um um man, I got rid of like three principals at one school in one year. I was the only one going to the school board meetings. I was the only one going to the PTO. I made them start having PTO meetings. People just don't know the things I have done single handed. It was not. With Andre, it was not with the Democratic Party. It was not with the NAACP, because I was there at the table voicing my opinion. Right. When they saw me, when, and, and what I always like, that's why I come and tell people when it comes to old white men. When I walked in the room, I was uh, twenty years old in my early twenties. They would respect me. They would call me Mr. Dance because they knew. When I came, I was about business. They, they probably couldn't pronounce your first name. <laughs> that might have been a problem. How do you, how do you pronounce your first uh, name? Camillus. Camillus. Uh -huh. but, but, they, uh, but they knew me as Butch. But, um, but I'm saying, I came in, I spoke, I did my homework and stuff. So they treated me like, you know, they treated me like a, like a person. Because they knew I was coming. They was like, well, what is he here for today? You know, and then... Like I said, I brought but you had, to, you had to earn that, though. Right, right. And where we should be as a mm -hmm. people is where you don't have to earn Man, that. I'm telling you, when I went let me, when I went to the to the uh, NAACP, I said it because I joined them in 1992. They were the first, um, um, uh, well, they were the first, but they were 1992. Okay, when I went in, and people like me because they say, you, you speak up, you know, you're militant. That's what the black folks said. The white militant. folks said I was, I was racist. But what took me, I'll never forget it when I went to the Democratic Party. The, the black folks said, We need you because you don't like white folks. I said, Hold oh, on, wait a minute. Just because I, I said, I challenge everybody. But I tell people, my, grand, <laughs> my, my granddaddy was a white man. I got family members that's married to white people. So where this come from? I never said I didn't like white people. Right. Right. So, you know, I'm like, wow. Uh, uh, um, the fine, the, fine, the Carl family in Pine Top, Vines Carl, we commissioned there in Pine Top. My grandma, they, they were raised up on, the, on, on their farm and stuff. Well, we all related. <laughs> we related. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's kind of like when mm -hmm. folks, um, you know, like Andre told me this, actually. We mm -hmm. had a, I had a conversation with him one day about my wife. Mm -hmm. And she don't know what she is. Right. But, you know, Andre say 1%. Oh, you see, he's you know, a historian, a, see. You know, so, mm -hmm. so well, you know, so I have a lot of people over the years mm -hmm. that would say extremely racist things mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you know, you're talking about my wife. Right. You're talking about my kids. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about me <laughs> because we're all much. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody mm -hmm. that, any anybody that thinks that they're, 100 percent so oh, it's full because right. Right. we're not because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh, interplay going uh, on exactly. back in the day uh, right? exactly. mm -hmm. so and why is it even important it, just treat people right you know i i know <laughs> i don't understand i mean I, you know i i i do understand oh, yeah, because like we yeah. said it's it's ignorance oh yeah but i don't think it's ignorance as much today oh, as it's it not is. Today. it's, not it's, it's and they want it's to do it willful ignorance. right it, it, it's, it's a they don't want do. they don't want mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see that right right mm -hmm. so um but let me um let me close it because um, yeah we, it's we, about uh, 5 30 and i had a, a cover call i need to be on the five o'clock we do a cover well, update you oh no i'm good i'm good um we have it every two weeks but I'm oh the COVID update yeah we do it every 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 other week um, All right, but, uh, but but I want you to I do this again. I do oh this. yeah, definitely. We're gonna get together again. But I want you to close out stuff. something you want to say. Uh, you want this one? Something I want to close out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, treat people the way you want to be treated. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, I, I don't I don't know no better than that. I, I mean, know. Been, been many good people have been saying that for the last several times. And we can years. agree to disagree. Absolutely. And, but but see, my thing. Why I tell people all the time, even like I say, you. Uh, Andre, anybody. If we have a disagreement, we don't stop talking. We just that when that subject come up again, we are hashing out again. That's but right. but you know we're going on to something else. We agree more 
with what we do as a people versus disagree. So if I can get along with you because we agree with more, and then when we start disagreeing less, <laughs> you know, then sure. that's a problem. Yeah. Because we don't need to be around no, each other. No, but I mean, you're, you're right. That is good. I, that'll be my final statement. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the more that people talk mm -hmm. to each other. That's right. The, the harder it is to hate someone. Exactly. The more you talk to someone, the harder it is to, to classify that person as other. Mm -hmm. right? The harder it is to, to put that person on the outside. That's right. And that's why in this country I think that folks don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. Because they want to live in that comfortable little bubble that they live in. Oh, yeah. And they want to make Andre Knight the bad guy. Mm -hmm. They want to make Butch the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got to say. All right, I appreciate you, bro, bro. You bet. All right.